When most people think of a timeline of the invention of different modes of transportation, the assumption is that, other than the obvious form of walking, the transportation came to us with the invention of the wheel around 3500 BC. However, it would appear that travel by boat predates the invention of the wheel by over 4,000 years. The oldest boat that has been recovered by excavationists and explorers is the Pass Canoe, which was discovered in the Netherlands. The canoe was constructed out of the hollowed out tree trunk of a Pinus sylvestris, and I apologize if I'm butchering that pronunciation. There have been many famous boats through the years. The famous voyage of Christopher Columbus in 1492 attributed with the discovery of the New World that would become America through the use of the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. And there's the Mayflower, attributed to bringing the pilgrims to the New World in 1610, the Lusitania, the Victory, the Titanic. Did I forget one? Hey kids, welcome home. For tonight's video, we're going to spend one more night in California and make our way to Long Beach. Since our last straw poll resulted in a tie, it seems only fair that we tackle both locations back to back, especially since they're both in California. So get your sea legs ready for this one, kids. We're heading to the Queen Mary. From haunted dolls to ghost children in the former swimming pool, there is a terrifying history to quite literally take a deep dive into. So grab your life preservers and head for the lifeboats. It's going to be a bumpy ride. The Queen Mary was commissioned in 1930 in Clydebank, Scotland, but she was not immune to the economic hardships caused by the Great Depression, and the maiden voyage of the ship would not occur until May 27, 1936. Departing from Southampton, England, the Queen Mary was a wonder on the water, boasting five dining areas and lounges, two cocktail bars and swimming pools, a grand ballroom, a squash court, and a small hospital. Under normal sailing conditions, the Queen Mary's max capacity was 2,139 passengers and was considered to be one of the most powerful ships ever built. At a whopping 1,018 feet long and weighing in at more than 81,000 tons, the Queen Mary was second only to the French liner the Normandy in terms of size, even larger than the infamous Titanic, which by comparison, it may seem small at a mere 883 feet long and weighing a measly 46,000 tons. No biggie. The Queen Mary housed two dozen boilers and four sets of turbines which generated 160,000 horsepower used to fuel its four propellers, which turned at a rate of 200 revolutions per minute. According to QueenMary.com, for three years after her maiden voyage, the Queen Mary was the grandest ocean liner in the world, carrying Hollywood celebrities like Bob Hope and Clark Gable, royalty like the Duke and Duchess of Windsor, and dignitaries like Winston Churchill. During this time, she even set a new speed record, which she held for 14 years. But when the Queen Mary docked in New York in September of 1939, that would be the last time she would carry civilian passengers for many years. As World War II started, the Queen Mary's transformation into a troop ship had begun. She was painted a camouflaged gray color and stripped of her luxurious amenities. Dubbed the Grey Ghost because of her stealth and stark color, the Queen Mary was the largest and fastest troop ship to sail, capable of transporting as many as 16,000 troops at 30 knots. After the end of World War II, the Queen Mary began a 10-month retrofitting process, which would return the ship to her original glory. On July 21st of 1947, the Queen Mary resumed regular passenger service across the Atlantic Ocean and continued to do so for nearly two more decades. What finally led to the end for the Queen Mary was the increase in popularity of air travel. By 1965, the Cunard fleet, of which Queen Mary was a part of, was operating at a loss, and it was due to this continuing decline that the heartbreaking decision was made to retire and sell the legendary Queen Mary. 
She would have one last hurrah and would set sail for one final voyage on October 31st of 1967 with a total of 1,000 passengers celebrating and enjoying her for that last voyage and would arrive at her, for lack of a better term, final resting place in Long Beach, California. While the Queen Mary had achieved renown and acclaim in her active days, she has gained notoriety more so in recent years as a floating hotel, wedding and meeting venue, and Halloween attraction. Just as, fatefully predicted by well-known English psychic Lady Mabel Fortescue Harrison in 1934, who said, The Queen Mary will know her greatest fame and popularity when she never sails another mile or carries another fair-paying passenger. And while the Queen Mary may still see its fair share of guests, the question of how many of the inhabitants are alive versus the alternative is still highly debated. That's right, kids. It's time to talk about the ghosts. With such a varied and intriguing past, it's not surprising that the Queen Mary has been voted one of the top 10 most haunted locations in America by Time Magazine. According to a Ranker.com article written by Sabrina Eithel, there are a total of 15 supposed ghosts haunting the Queen Mary. Let's discuss a few of my favorites, shall we? The first tale is that of the ghost of John Petter, who was a crewmate aboard the Queen Mary in the 1960s. On the morning of July 10th, 1966, the crew was running a routine emergency drill in the early morning hours. As a safety precaution, door 13 near the engine room had a 60-second closure process, but for some unknown reason, 18-year-old Petter decided to walk between the doorways during this process. His reckless decision and poor timing would end up being fatal as he was caught between the door and was crushed to death. Now affectionately dubbed Half Hatch Harry, Petter is regularly spotted in corridors and elevators that surround the engine room and in the narrow passageway that extends from the engine room to the stern, an area called Shaft Alley. Guests that tour this area often report seeing a bearded man in overalls following them, and upon approaching door 13, the man disappears. Half Hatch Harry also likes to make his presence known by tugging on purses or clothing and banging on pipes. Many guests also report to seeing greasy handprints appearing out of nowhere. One of the most popular and also one of the saddest stories revolves around a chilling instance that occurred in room B-474. In a story sadly reminiscent of the tale of the Perelson family, a family staying in that room would meet a tragic end when the husband and father, for reasons unknown, murdered his wife and one of his children. He then proceeded into the room's bathroom, where he would also murder his other child before taking his own life. The rumor is that this second child, whose name was Dana, still haunts the ship to this day. Several people have reported to hearing her running and playing around the archive and cargo areas of the ship, and sometimes she can be heard crying and looking for her mother in the hopes of finally being reunited after being separated for decades. But Dana is not the only young girl to have found a home on the Queen Mary in her afterlife. One of the most popular and commonly seen ghosts aboard the Queen Mary is a little girl by the name of Jackie Torin. Jackie was approximately five or six when she drowned in the second class pool. Jackie is one of the most recorded spirits of the Queen Mary and has continued to spook both guests and investigators for decades, as she has been known to audibly respond to questions and also provides quite lively EVP exchanges. As reported by Kathy Lowe, a maintenance supervisor aboard the ship, we came into the pool and I heard giggling, the sound of a little girl playing in that area. And at that point I noticed there was splashing. The splashing stopped. The giggling continued. 
and we observe the wet footprints of a small child walking across into the locker room. I know that I saw what I saw. I'm not sure exactly why I saw it, but I know it was there. YouTubers Keen and JC would experience firsthand just how vocal Miss Jackie can be. Mate, I don't f***ing like that. <laughs> Mate. What's down here? And as any of you who have watched the very first episode of The Haunted United States, The Haunted 1600, will already know, I have a bit of a soft spot for the smart alky good nature of Winston Churchill. So it was interesting to me to learn that Churchill himself may have some residual effect on the Queen Mary, most specifically its M deck. The British Prime Minister and political powerhouse stayed aboard the luxury liner several times during World War II, and during these stays, the crew would reserve the entire M deck for Churchill and his entourage, and he is said to have considered the M deck his quote unquote headquarters on the sea. An uh, interesting historical fact for you, his D-Day declaration was actually penned during one of his stays upon the Great Ghost. Those wanting to honor the spirit of his memory can do so still today by visiting the lounge that now bears his name and the private suite that he stayed at during his numerous travels. However, some guests report that good old Winston has left the ship with a few more eerie reminders of his existence. Lodgers have reported sighting Churchill himself near his private quarters, as well as on the promenade, the sun, and sports decks. Thumps, bumps, disembodied voices, and someone clearing their throat have been heard emanating from Churchill's empty suite. Empty suite. The most common occurrence is an overpowering smell of heavy cigar smoke near his room and on the M deck, even though no one can smoke in those areas. Another popular tale of supernatural activity aboard the ship comes not from ghostly apparitions, but from a supposedly haunted doll. To get the full story, we're going to return to one of our favorites, the fabulous Miss Haley Reese. You met somebody earlier, uh, like who works here, and she said that when she worked on a uh, shift down here in the bar, there's a doll that stands up and no, sits down. Yeah. Once a year. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so the Revenant Room is the home of Mr. Aiden Sinclair. He's our resident illusionist. He does a show called uh, Illusions of the Past. Right. It's amazing. Go see it. This was all crew quarters before. Mail handling space. We're a postal carrier. RMS stands for Royal Mail Ship, RMS Queen Mary. But Aiden has taken over this space. <laughs> I don't get special effects. Come on in. Ooh, that's eerie. Oh, it gets better. Okay. Oh boy. Hello, darling. How are you tonight? That's her. Oh my goodness. In the box? That's her. Very interesting story about this little doll. Aiden has traveled the world collecting haunted artifacts. This little doll belonged to a girl in Cheyenne, Wyoming at the turn of the century, the late 1800s, early 1900s. Uh, this little girl and her mother lived in the Atlas Theater, the rooms up above it. The mother was not pleasant. The little girl was deemed to be clumsy. That's 1800s code for child abuse. The mother overheard the daughter say to her doll, 
I love you more than anything in the world. This made the mother very upset, and so she had this doll locked in this wooden crate and said, you will never lay a finger on her again. That is so She's cruel. not a nice woman. The little girl unfortunately died. Clumsy. The mother died a week later. She fell down a flight of stairs. At the top of the stairs, was that? A doll's arm. This doll's arm. Even though it was locked up. It was at the top of the stairs. Wow. Perhaps she stepped on it and slipped down the stairs. Maybe she was pushed. We don't know. Now the little doll in here has still been locked in this crate for most of her life. But occasionally, she gets bored with us and she sits down. She's standing right now. And she will sit. And to see her, you have to get right up to the screen and look in. But every once in a while, she stands up so she can take a look out like she is right now. I, I have never seen her move, but yep. I have seen her both seated and standing. Right no here. way! There's been times where I That's bring a haunted tour in here. She is seated by the time we come in. She is standing by the time we leave. After looking back on the footage of the doll, it does look as though her face may have moved. What do you guys think? One thing that has never been debated is what the most haunted room aboard the ship is, with persistent complaints of strange noises, footsteps, faucets turning off and on, hangers moving in the closet of their own accord, and voices. There is plenty of creep factor to go around for those brave enough to stay in room B340. Several acclaimed YouTubers have braved the room, and every one of them claim to have had chilling experiences and encounters in the infamous room. Loey Lane and friend slash roommate London Victoria would experience firsthand the knocking the room is infamous for. So in here is the bathroom. Um, we have, oh God, the shower. Um, here's the mirror, pretty standard, pretty much like you'd see on a ship, except, oh look, the instructions on how to play bloody Mary, can we talk about the fact that this room has only been reopened for like six months? Not even April. Well, yeah, six months. No, it can't already be happening. Did <laughs> you tell me you heard that? Coming from like here, right? Yeah. From like in this closet. No, I don't like this. I actually like, no. Is I there someone out there? No. Okay, actually no. Where did that come from? Was it in there? And as for Omar of Omar Gosh TV, he would experience firsthand the reasons why people will tell you never to use a Ouija board. Um, are you a good or a bad spirit? You swear you guys ain't messing with that? I swear, bro, I'm not it's, moving. It's, it's a good no. spirit. No. That's a good thing. Wait, why did it... What did it do? I asked... I, yeah, we did ask it. I said, are you... Oh, it's a good spirit. I was like, it's a good spirit. Now it said no. It said no. So it's a... So oh, it's, not it's a evil. Good... Okay, uh... Bella, did you die in this room? Oh my god, I'm, I'm getting the most goosebumps right now. Oh. What did it say? It says it yes. yes. It says okay. Yeah, quick. Um... Are we in danger right now? Oh, sh wait, 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 sh what the? F Dude, what oh, is that? that? It coming from the closet. Did Batman. you guys hear that? Yes. There was, was something, something in there. Hold on, hold on. Was that you who made that noise in the closet? Oh my God, bro! What What's the going? hell? Oh. What's so bad? Um, are, are we making you mad? Dude, what? It's turning sideways. Oh shit, uh, what do we do? What do we do? Are we so what did you ask? I said are we making her mad? And I'm going back to yes. Uh do you want us to stop playing? Oh that's touching the Ouija board. Not me. Yes. I said yes. Why do you want us to stop playing? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yo, Dude, yo! That, stop, like, bro! That was stop. like uh, stop. Like I did that, but I didn't do that. You what do you mean you I did, did not do like 
And that, I, I did not mean to do that. So you spazzed out? No, I didn't do that. What did, what did that spell? Bro, went to goodbye. I didn't do that. Like, oh! Bro! Uh, look at the freaking door! Look at the door! Oh, wait, what? The door's open. That door was freaking closed. Despite that creepy encounter, Omar the Brave decided that it would be a good idea to not only sleep in the infamous room, but to record what happened. Little did he know that the room's otherworldly inhabitants were not feeling so sleepy. Well, James has got the couch, I got the bed, and we are going to film ourselves sleeping. For this last video, I'm going to tell you to take it with a grain of salt because I'm 99% sure that some of this is the work of a brilliant mind because it comes from respected horror short filmmaker and a personal favorite of mine, Drew Daywalt. I just couldn't miss an opportunity to mesh two of my channel playlists together, so just for fun. I present to you the experiences of Drew Daywalt in room B340.
as we have discovered in our time together at this location, there are plenty of haunted tales to go around when it comes to the RMS Queen Mary. And I would encourage you, if you're interested, to take a look at some videos for yourself, because no matter how much evidence I was able to show you tonight, we've only scratched the surface. But with such a rich history of horrific events and spooky occurrences, it was only a matter of time before the Queen Mary would be converted for the Halloween season as a haunted attraction. Dark Harbor was introduced to the public for the first time in 2009 and features six haunted mazes, a 4D theater experience, hundreds of monsters, and various forms of live entertainment. Each experience is uniquely crafted to provide a creepy tale intermixed with creative and terrifying characters and horrifically realistic makeup and costumes that ensure that you will find yourself engrossed in the experience. But, like most good horror, within each of the creative experiences that you will venture into at Dark Harbor, there is an element of truth to the tales that you will encounter. Keep an eye out for Half Hatch Harry, although Dark Harbor has changed his name to Half Hatch Henry, which, I admit, has a nice ring to it. And if you happen to stumble into Lullaby, you will also stumble upon the infamous Jackie. Although this Dark Harbor version of Jackie is a little less wholesome as the tales of the actual namesake of the attraction. Don't get me wrong, Jackie will be more than happy to play with you in a much more Grady Twins kind of way. Regardless of the path you find yourself traveling as you make your way through Dark Harbor, you're guaranteed a few things for certain. You will be impressed, you will be entertained, and you will be terrified. Because the Queen Mary wants to ensure that she has your attention, even if you're not brave enough to actually stay the night. The Queen Mary may be permanently docked and will no longer travel the waterways. However, she continues to draw a crowd and most definitely still has an appeal for passengers, even 91 years after she was first commissioned. This massive ship clearly holds its fair share of secrets and tales of longing, sadness, and terror that has held our attention for decades, and I have no doubt she will continue to hold our attention for many more decades to come. I hope you guys had fun on our voyage today. This story by far had the most evidence, cases, and videos that I reviewed, and there was so much more evidence that I could have included. And because of that, there will be some extra bonus content that I will be uploading soon with an interview with a very special former guest of the Queen Mary, so stay tuned for that. I also encourage you all to get out there and find a story of your own to dig into about the ship. Share your favorite Queen Mary stories with me in the comments below, and as always, like the video so I know that you survived until the end. Subscribe to join us on our haunted adventures, because there are so many more coming. Until our next adventure, remember to take care of yourselves, and that I love you all. Good night. Late nights, been a long flight, stayed on. Strange time, it's a strange time in my life. I, I took a drive home to clear my mind. Oh.